Welcome to Science Easy Tech Channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about unpadded t-test example sums. This video will be very much useful for MSc nursing students as well as BSc nursing students. This video is also useful for students who are studying biostatistics. Before moving on to the topic, if you are new to Science Easy Tech channel, just take a moment to subscribe our channel and also to press the notification bell icon in order to get connected with our latest updates. Already I have posted many videos with regard to nursing research and statistics. If you have not watched those videos, I have given the link in description box, suggested end cards and i cards also. Let's move on to the question. So this question was taken from Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University question paper for MSc nursing students. Three, two type of drugs were used on 5 and 7 patients for reducing their weight. The decrease in weight in cages after using the drugs for 6 months was as follows. Drug A, the reduction is weight after 6 months is 10 kgs, 12 kgs, 13 kgs, 11 kgs and 14 kgs. After using drug B, the reduction of weight after 6 months is 8 kgs, 9 kgs, 12 kgs, 14 kgs, 15 kgs, 10 kgs and 9 kgs. So you have to compare the efficiency of the two drugs. So they have not given what type of statistical test you have to apply. So like this they will be giving the statement and you have to identify what type of test you have to do so in my previous videos i have explained about pad t test how you will identify pad t test pad t test means only one group will be there for one that same group you will be comparing the pre test or post test and post test values or you will be comparing the before intervention and after intervention values so it is only one single group you are comparing between pre-test and post-test. So this is the clue for pad t-test. Here what is the clue means you are having two independent sample groups that is drug A is one group and drug B is one group. So you are going to compare the means of these two independent sample groups. So this is your clue. So what you have to use? You have to use unpad t-test. You have to use unpaired t test because you are having two significant sample two significant independent samples you are having so use unpaired t test so to find out the solution we have to use unpaired t test for comparing the efficiency of these two drugs or well, let's formulate the hypothesis first so to in order to test the significance the first the step is formulating the hypothesis. So H0 means null hypothesis. H1 means research hypothesis or it is otherwise called as alternative hypothesis. So H0 mu1 is equal to mu2 and H1 mu1 is not equal to mu2. So H0 there is no significant difference in the efficiency of two drugs. H1 there is a significant difference in the efficiency of two drugs. So H0 that is null hypothesis there is no significant difference in the efficiency of the two drugs H1 there is a significant difference in the efficiency of two drugs so T is equal to X1 bar minus X2 bar divided by square root of Sigma X1 minus X bar whole square plus Sigma X2 minus X2 bar whole square divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2 into 1 divided by n1 plus 1 divided by n2 there are so many formulas for t but i find this formula is uh, simple even though it looks big if you are going to by heart this formula from the formula itself you can get a clue what are all the things you have to find out and easily you can substitute those findings in the given uh, uh, in the given formula so t is equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar divided by square root of sigma x1 minus x1 bar whole square plus 
sigma x2 minus x2 bar whole square divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2 into 1 divided by n1 plus 1 divided by n2. So x1 bar is equal to mean of first group. Here what is the first group? Yes, the first group is patients who have received drug A. x2 bar is mean of group 2. Here what is the second group? Yes, patients who have received drug B. So n1 is number of samples in group 1 that is in the drug A group. That is how much from the given data we know that the number of samples in group 1 that is n1 is 5 and n2 is number of samples in the group 2 that is in drug B group it is from the given data it is clear that 7 samples. So now what you have to find out you have to find out sigma x1 minus x1 bar whole square and sigma x2 minus x2 bar whole square. So these are all the things what you have to find out. So let's see for drug A. So this is for what? This is for drug A. So the drug A values that is drug A how you can put. So drug A you can put it as what? X1 group. So drug A is equal to x1 group you are considering it as x1 so x1 write all the values what has been given in drug a 10 12 13 11 14 so next x1 minus x1 bar you have to find out so to find out x1 bar what you have to do you have to add all the x1 values 10 plus 12 plus 13 plus 11 plus 14. So once you are adding all the x values you can find out x1 bar. So how you can find out x1 bar is by adding all the x1 bar values. So when you are adding you are getting what you are getting 60. Now next to what you have to do, you have to substitute in the given formula. So uh, what is the formula for finding out x1 bar? Yes, the formula for finding out x1 bar is sigma x1 divided by n. So what is sigma x1? Yes, it is 60. So what is n? That is in group A1 or drug A group, you have 5 samples. Okay, so 60 divided by 5 is equal to 12. So 12 is your what? X1 bar value. So your X1 bar value is 12. Now you have to substitute each of the x1 bar x1 values with that of x1 bar values so x1 minus 12 12 is your x1 bar so 10 minus 12 is minus 2 12 minus 12 is 0 13 minus 12 is 1 11 minus 12 is minus 1 14 minus 12 is 2 so now what you have to do you have to find out x1 minus x1 bar whole square minus 2 square is plus 4 0 square is 0 1 square is 1 minus 1 square is plus 1 2 square is 4 so now you have to add all the x1 minus x1 bar whole square values 4 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4 which is equal to 10. So when you are adding everything you will be getting sigma x1 minus x1 bar whole square which is equal to 10. Next we have to find out for drug B. So drug B we are taking it as what x2. Drug B we are taking it as x2. So x2 values and all you have to write in the x2 column that is 8, 9, 12, 14, 15, 10 and 9. Then the same thing you have to find out x2 bar. So if you want to find out x2 bar, what is the formula? Sigma x2 divided by n. n is 7. In group B, that is drug B, 
ne seven. So next, what you have to do add all the values of x two eight plus nine plus twelve plus fourteen plus fifteen plus ten plus nine, which is equal to seventy seven. So now substitute in the formula x two bar is equal to seventy seven divided by seven, which is equal to eleven. Okay, so next step, what you have to do, x two minus x two bar. So substitute each of the x two values with that of eleven because eleven is your x two bar. Eight minus eleven is minus three. Nine minus eleven is minus two. Twelve minus eleven is one. Fourteen minus eleven is three. Fifteen minus eleven uh, is four. Ten minus eleven is minus one. Nine minus eleven is minus two. Okay, next what you have to do square root of three minus three square nine minus two square four one square one three square nine four square sixteen minus one square plus one minus two square four. So now you have find out x two minus x two bar whole square. Then what you have to do find out you have to find out sigma x two minus x two bar whole square. So add all the x two minus x two bar whole square values nine plus four plus one plus nine plus. Sixteen plus one plus four, which is equal to forty-four. So your sigma x two minus x two bar whole square values are forty-four. So now you have found out you have find out what are all the things necessary for substituting in the formula. You have find out x one bar which is sixty sigma x one minus x one bar whole square which is ten. Then you have found out x two bar which is eleven. You have found out uh, uh, sigma x two minus x two bar whole square which is forty four. Next to substitute in the formula. T is equal to twelve minus eleven divided by square root of. Uh, Uh, what is twelve means x one bar. Then eleven means x two bar. Then what is uh, sigma x one minus x two x x one bar whole square? It is ten plus. What is sigma x two minus x two bar whole square? It is forty four divided by n one is five plus n two is seven minus two. Then into one divided by n one. What is n one is five. Plus one divided by n two that is one by seven. So the formula becomes a uh, t is equal to twelve minus one into square root of ten plus forty four plus five plus seven minus two into one divided by five plus one divided by seven, which is equal to one divided by square root of ten plus forty four is fifty four divided by five plus seven twelve twelve minus two is ten. Into one divided by five is point two. One divided by seven is point four. Point one four. Sorry. So one divided by square root of fifty four divided by ten is five point four. Five point four into zero point two plus zero point one four is zero point three four. So is equal to one divided by five point four into zero point three four, which is equal to one point eight three six. Square root of one point eight three six, which is equal to one divided by one point three five four nine. One divided by one point three five four nine, which is equal to zero point seven three eight. So t calculated value is zero point seven three eight. So next you have to find out t table value in examination point of view they will be giving the t table value for you suppose if you are going to do it for your thesis purpose or for practicing purpose you should know how to find out the t value so first what you have to find out you have to find out the degrees of freedom how you will be finding the degrees of freedom yes for um two sample independent sample means the degree of freedom of formula is n1 plus n2 minus 2 what is n1 here 5 what is n2 here 7 5 plus 7 minus 2 which is 12 minus 2 which is equal to 10 df is equal to 10 so df 10 at 5% level of significance is 2.228 so the from the table value you have identified it is 2.228 so i will show how you have to find out the table value so here see 
t value degree of freedom so which degree of freedom 10 at 10 at 0 0.05 percentage or 5 percentage level of significance that is 0 0.05 level the value is 2.228 so in this way you have to find out the uh, table value so now you can compare the table value with that of the calculated value calculated value is 0 0.738 what is the table value table value is 2.228 so t calculated value is less than the t table value if the calculated value is less than the table value you have to accept null hypothesis and you have to reject alternate hypothesis so here we are accepting the null hypothesis that is we are telling that there is no significant difference in the efficiency of the two drugs so we can conclude that there is no significant difference in the efficiency of the two drugs or both drug a and b are going to have the same effect we cannot tell drug a is best than drug b or drug b is best than drug a okay we cannot tell that drug A is more effective than drug B or vice versa that is drug B is more effective than drug A both drugs are having the same action so there is no difference in the efficiency of the two drugs so the null hypothesis is accepted and alternative hypothesis or research hypothesis is rejected hope this video is clear for you all if you like my video please give a thumbs up share and subscribe to science easy tech channel my previous videos link as i have told earlier i have given in description box already i have posted videos on student t-test as well as pad t-test example sums if you have not watched those videos i have given the link in end card i card and also in description box thank you friends keep supporting to science easy tech channel